Hey guys, this is Tony with RV Barn Dominium. Well, today's project. We have been having a lot of bad weather in the area. And one of the things that I haven't finished is getting my generator hooked up as far as uh, an outdoor plug, which I could then connect to the side of the house from outside because you want your generator running outside due to the fumes and it will push the power into the house. Now, there's a lot of things to remember and beware of when you start running a generator to give power access to your house. Uh, number one and foremost, if you are not utterly comfortable doing electrical, call somebody who is. Call an electrician, call a buddy who's an electrician, <laughs> or at least be very sure you know what you're doing. You are tying power into your house and uh, you can mess a lot of things up. So. Uh, uh, I am far from a professional. This is not a how-to video. This is just an informational video of what it takes to do it, what uh, items are required to do it, and, uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, here's a few of the things that you're going to have to have and understand and know. The biggest thing you have to remember about hooking a gener up, generator up to your home is when you bring power into into your house, let me let me open it. It's undone. Let me uh, take the panel off here for you. As you can tell, I already got my wire ran into the house. But okay, so if you run power to a generator to a breaker inside your house, not only are you quote the possibilities you're feeding power to the rest of the the, the panel and all of the breakers, but in the same uh, situation, you're also feeding power out of your house to the power lines, to the community. That's a no-no. You do not want that, and you can get in a lot of trouble for that. If somebody is out there on the power lines trying to restore power to the community because the power lines are down or there's an outage, and they're trying to work on the lines, you're feeding power out to them and you can electrocute them. Bad juju. So one of the items that you get for doing a panel is what they call, it's an interlock kit. Now my system, my panel is an Eaton uh, 200 amp panel. This is, an, this is the, the manufacturer's uh, made interlock for this panel. Uh, this one's an interlock for 150 amp to up to 220 amp indoor. So this is the one that goes in my panel. Be forewarned, these manufacturers love these. And I say they love it because they don't want to get rid of them without charging you an arm and a leg. This was like $80. And <laughs> you're paying $80 for literally... A, uh, a couple of pieces of metal and some, some uh, anyway, this is $80, but this is vital in uh, using a generator in this situation. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Like I said, this is vital for having and using a generator to supply emergency power to your house. Because what, what this interlock does, your generator will end up going to this breaker over here on the bottom right hand side. And this is your main shutoff. When you mount this interlock on the outside of the, outside of the panel, this interlock moves up and down. And what it, what it does is, is that it only allows one of those two to be turned on at a time. So you physically have to turn off the power to the outside world in order to turn the power on to allow the generator to come in. And vice versa. If you want to turn the power back on, you have to turn the generator power off to turn the outside power back on. Only one can be on, open at a time, and that is due to the shape of this cutout, and it slides up and down to allow whichever one. 
when I mount this to the face plate, it goes on to it goes onto your main panel, the outside uh, metal. There's actually mine has dimples that are already on mine that line up and correspond with the holes. So literally, it is made for it, and it goes on right there, and that is going to control which breakers can can be on only while certain breakers are off so that is the safety thing this is a safety device this is a life-saving device for the people who are out there working on your power lines trying to restore power to your community and that way you're not back feeding electricity out onto the lines and uh, possibly doing them harm uh, but anyway, so let's look at some of the items that, uh, that we have to have in order to do this project. Okay. So like we said, one of the items you're going to need is you're going to need to get your panel interlock. Buy the one that's manufactured for your panel. That way you don't get into any legal issues about buying a second-hand, off-market, whatever. Buy the one that goes with your panel, main brand, main brand. Your local electrical supply house could tell you what it is. Google it. Go to the, go to the website of the manufacturer of your panel. They'll have the, this listed. This is a very common item. So this is item number one. Get your interlock for this project. All right. Second item of business. You're going to need a breaker. This is going to be put into the into the breaker panel. This is where you're going to be turning on and off your, your uh, generator. Now, you have a choice. You can either just use a, a single, which means that you will be feeding 110 volt into your house, or you can use a double to feed 220 into the house. And that is a lot of that is dependent upon two items. Number one, what do you want to operate whenever you have it inside the house? Uh, or, uh, I have to say that, uh, what, what can your generator do? What is the capacity of your generator? So does your generator do 220? Does it only do 110? Whichever. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. Uh, the one item you got to remember is, is if, if you mount it on the, only on one side, if it's a single and it's on this side, it's only going to supply power to the one side. Okay? It won't supply power to this side. If it's on 110, if it's a 220 block, it'll feed power to this side and it'll feed power to this side. And that's how the configuration of how the, uh, uh, the, the line feed, the lines connect inside there. Consult your electrician. <laughs> now, in my case, uh, I have to mount it on the right hand side and this is all my 220 outlets. So kind of wish I would have had that backwards whenever I did it because Technically speaking, if I'm in a, a power outage situation, I'm only going to run 110 devices. I'm going to run a refrigerator, mainly the refrigerator, as far as that's it. I mean, uh, if, if, if it's an emergency, I, my generator is not going to run the furnace. It's not going to run the in-floor heat. It might run the in-floor heat low, but it... Uh, it's just my generator does not have the capacity to do that. It does not have enough output. I could get a lot larger, but if it's an emergency, I'm just going to put on the put on my long johns and put on a put a hoodie on and put my car hearts on or whatever. Uh, so um, I'm mainly concerned about just keeping keeping the refrigerators running, keeping the all, uh, from that spoiling. So, but in my case, mine does do 220. I'm going to put 220 breaker in mine. It does go on the right hand side. That is because of that, uh, uh, because of that uh, uh, generator interlock. So uh, it has to go on the first top right. Now, in my case, the problem with it is, is that I already have something here. Hmm. I didn't think of this whenever I wired up my my panel. I wasn't thinking about that back then. So. Uh, I could either, I have enough slack in my line, I might be able to just take this out, mount it down here in my open slot down here, and be done. 
because I do have a lot of extra line. I don't know if I have enough. So that is where I'm going to have to figure this out uh, here in a minute. I'm not going to touch this while I've got power going. Uh, I am going to turn the main breaker off to fart around with this because I don't want to get electrocuted. Uh, don't want to let the smoke out, that's for sure. So uh, I'll, I'll look at that. If not, I'm going to have to do some shifting. Choose which ones I, I, I ship them around. i got a couple of them that's pulled a little tight that I really don't like. But, I mean, it's a, so it, it worst goes to worst, I'm going to shift them, take one that's down at the bottom, shift it over here, and then the whole side over here, I'm just going to bring it down. We'll figure that out once we get the power off. Let's start doing it. Now remember, when I start shifting all that stuff, I have to relabel the outside of my panel. That tells me which breakers are which breakers. So, you know, you know, it's going to cost me. I'm going to have to, you know, make a new labels and put new labels on there. So I got to keep track of those. Luckily, I label all my circuits on the inside with my little tags about what goes where. Everything is labeled, and uh, that helps a lot. So, but yeah, we'll see when we get into it. Let's go outside and look at what was what uh, what I had to install outside in order to uh, put this unit in. All right, so outside, what we had to do is we had to install a plug on the outside of the house. This is the one that I installed. Uh, in the name brand on it is a Reliance, as you can see in there. There's the twist lock. This one is a 30 amp, so that also matters about about what you plan on power that you want to feed in the house. If you plan on trying to run your washer and dry or your dryer or trying to run your oven or something of that sort, those are 50 amp. So you would have to get a much larger capacity plug. My generator won't do that. I only want to run the, run the refrigerators and vital, vital emergency systems. So I only have a 30 amp. Uh, here's the what's, <laughs> what's left of the box. Uh, as you see, this was a Reliant uh, PB30, which uh, it's rated for 30 amp. Tells you what kind of uh, what kind of plug. It tells it it'll use an L14-30, is what the plug is, and that allows you to be able to do your uh, to get your wire that goes from your generator to plug into this. Now, uh, I've already installed this. I installed this a while back. Uh, whenever I just had a day, I was doing it. Um, I, I just drilled a hole into the side of the barn. It goes into my utility room. And uh, then I ran a piece of PVC, con uh, PVC electrical conduit outside and that runs into the back of this box so that uh, the metal doesn't uh, rub on the wire and uh, uh, cause a short. So it is all conduited, uh, also to make it weatherproof. Caulked it up, put it on, and uh, screw screwed it into the side of the house. Um, like I said, this ain't a how-to video. This is just telling you what you're going to need and require in order to do this. Uh, I bought this plug at a big box store. So you go to your Home, Dope, Home Depot, your Lowe's, or your Menards or something like that, and go in the electrical section, and you will more than likely find those. They're probably right beside the RV plugs and things of that. So, and, and uh, let's see, is it called a generator plug? Uh, no, it just says for, uh, oh yeah, for generator cord connection. So it's, it's for generators. So uh, your big box stores will have them and uh, easy peasy. Now in my case, my generator line came in right here from outside. I put this junction box because it has the two screws and I can take this cap off. It makes it a whole lot easier to run that wire. It is a bigger wire. I think I ran a six gauge wire. Six? Can't remember. Can't remember what it was, but it's rated for the 30 amp. Uh, so I ran it in here and it goes straight up goes through my ceiling. Once it goes through the ceiling, then uh, it's an open attic space up there. So uh, I didn't have to have it inside the conduit and it runs over, comes down. And then when it comes out, uh, comes down oh, and comes out right here at my panel. So that's it. Like I said, this is not going to be a how-to video on electrical. Uh, by no means am I an expert in electrical. I did wire this entire barn myself, all the way from the outside to the inside. We mounted the pedestal and everything, but uh, that's not what this is about. So uh, this is the wire uh, that I've already ran all the way outside to that plug that comes in. Uh, you'll notice that mine is, uh, I've got my, my, uh, my uh, two hot, which is my black and my red. 
Each one of them will be carrying 120, 120. Uh, then I have my neutral and then I have my ground and that's the only connections. These two go to my breaker. This one goes to my neutral bar. This one's going to go to my ground bar in my case. I have a different system here. This is considered a secondary panel, not a primary. Call your electrician. So I'm going to take a look at this. We're going to have to turn the power off. So you're not going to be able to see much at all or whatnot. So I may just show you afterwards. And then I'll show you what's putting that uh, putting the interlock on the panel, outside panel, so that we can isolate which one is turned on or off. Uh, it's a really nifty system, very much required. Do not skip it. Oh, well, I'll just turn this off on that. What about if your children are the only one home when the power goes out? They're going to call you on the phone and you're going to say, go outside and turn this on, hook the generator plug, it's easy. Be sure and be sure and turn off the main power. Are they going to get it? Are they going to do it? Don't know. So better safe than sorry. The interlock makes it so that you have to turn off the main power to turn the generator on. That's your safety device. That is your interlock and spend the money on it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut the power off and uh, start playing with electrical. Sweet. One quick note before I turn my main power off, uh, I am going to turn off every breaker. Only because whenever I turn that main power back on again, I don't want it flying into the panel, flying into the house, and hitting everything. TVs, laptops, uh, highly expensive refrigerators that, you know, <laughs> I don't want to blow them out. So I'm going to go through, turn all my breakers off, including my lights. So I think I got better light without it than I did. Uh, but also, all my 220s. There we go. So, now I can turn off the main. Technically speaking, in my instance, I can go outside and actually turn off the main breaker outside. Double duty, double safe. You probably don't have that, but if you do, you can turn it off. So, I have no power. Power is gone. I'm going to take a look at this panel and see if I can move this one breaker down. <laughs> okay, so I got mine done. I got my generator breaker wired in right here. Top right, uh, though, you know, directly down here ready for the, uh, the interlock. So uh, that's where it has to be. So the generator's there. I end up having to move my range down here it was up here i moved it down to here and the one that was uh i think i had one down here lower that i moved down my uh, my oven and i moved it down to here because these were pulled tight and that allowed me to shift them down one give those wires a little bit uh, i i guarantee you i've got slack down in the wall because a lot of them i made a loop uh in case i messed up and had to uh, reposition it on on the panel so I mean, I could have done that, but it was just as easy to do that. So I did a lot of shifting in here. Um, nothing extravagant, but, you know, I shifted it. I got my, I got my, uh, uh, my common wires on my common, uh, my common strip. My ground is on my ground strip. And uh, so, yeah, other than I've got to mount the interlock onto the front panel. And then I'm going to have to go get my generator. I'm going to plug my generator, generator in outside. When I do that, I'm going to keep everything turned off, turn the generator on, make sure everything's copacetic with it, and then I'll turn on one breaker. More than likely, I'm gonna turn, turn on my utility shed because it's got a GFI breaker uh, plug out here, so if anything was wrong with it, it would trip that GFI. So yeah, other than that, I'm going to uh, get my panel ready. I'm going to get that interlock mounted. I'll show you that one. And then uh, I'm going to go fetch my generator and see if we can't uh, get to testing. Fairly easy project. One thing I do uh, would state on this is that after moving and shifting and messing in here, uh, I did go back and I put the uh, put my screw, which uh, my screwdriver, which I have the the Milwaukee electrical 
screwdrivers that are insulated so you don't actually do a cross arc. My panel's turned off, so it's not an issue. But uh, uh, very, very uh, good thing to purchase or ask for a gift. They're not expensive. $20 for a full set. And um, I re make sure that everything was tight. Tighten it down because when you move it, they shift. So I went through and made sure everything was retightened down again. Uh, make sure my grounds were still grounded on the ground block. Make sure my neutrals were still, still you know, down because they all got jostled. And uh, just tighten everything back up again. Make sure everything's nice and snug. And uh, yeah, safety first. Manufacturer states that I to drill a 3 16th inch hole in each one of these holes that corresponds to this mount. Looks like I only need two. It's going to be the top and the bottom. cleaning up some of the shards. Hmm. Actually, one of them's that one. what they were doing here is they're wanting you to go through that through the inside to that one yeah
Let me go find my last screw and get that put in there. I'll be done. I found it. It was over there on, left it on the other side. All right. So as you can see here, this moves up and down. That's what blocks this breaker while this breaker's on. Then when you turn this one off, it moves up, then this one can move over. Once it's on the panel, it'll make a lot more sense. Well, all right. So got everything connected on the inside. I've got my uh, cord that I had, I made that has the plugs that go from there, goes to my generator. I'm gonna turn the electrical power off that sets the breaker off so that uh, the generator does not send power. I'll uh, wait on that one there. So uh, we're gonna start her up and see what we get. All right. Now I did turn my outside power off also, just as a safety precaution, and my inside. Well, the lighting is low. Well, we're running up what's coming in through the uh, through the uh, transom windows, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. So, uh, as of right now, everything is turned off. All my breakers are off, uh, especially the main power and the main power outside. I did that one as a safety. I don't have my door on right now uh, because I'm just testing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my breaker here and see if. Uh, See if everything's okay. Whew. Fingers crossed. Ooh, I hate that. <laughs> okay, so as of right now, I should have power. I should have 110 power going down to this side, and I should have one, 110 power going down this side. Now, uh, nothing on this side requires power because uh, these are all my 220 circuits. So, uh, I'm just going to use what's on this side and just for testing I'm going to turn on one item and I'm going to use the utility room right here that runs this utility room and uh, I have very very little plugged into it I've unplugged the IT equipment the internet I've also unplugged the uh, the the main uh, pump for the in-floor heating so nothing is plugged in except for Probably this light. So, fingers crossed. Nothing. Oh, I didn't turn the breaker off on in there. Let me turn that back off. I got to go out to the generator and turn on the power to get power out of the generator. I didn't hit that breaker, so... Uh, Give me a second. Boy, I tell you what, there's no creepier feeling than whenever you say, oh, it should come on. Click. Nothing. <laughs> All right, so uh, I turned on the breaker outside for the, on the generator. That tells it to send power out to the sockets on it. Uh, actually, the generator one is on in here. And uh, so there we go. I've got power to this light. Now, I notice this light is flickering just a spitch you may not be able to see that uh that's because it's generator power yeah let me see what i got i'm gonna go in here and test the uh test the the light on the inside of the room yeah so my uh, utility room light came on it works, so it looks like I'm feeding power into the house from everything I've calculated or what I know. Um, I should be able to do um, some minimal power. Uh, so I've got the light on the utility room. I'm going to turn on the lights to the garage. Ugh. 
and all my garage lights came on. So that's one, two, three, four, four very large power strips. I did hear the generator bog just a little bit. Uh, so I am putting a load on the generator now. So uh, I'm gonna get the panel put on this thing and we can show you exactly how that uh, interlock works and how that isolates that out so that you don't send back current into the, onto the uh, uh, outside lines and risk electrocuting <laughs> electricians while they're out there trying to get your power back online. So uh, let me get the panel back on and we'll take a gander at it. Okay, let's get a good, uh, let's get a good look at this interlock here. So in this position, right now it is up, that allows this one to come over. But while this is in the up position, I can't turn this breaker on. It hits, it hits the metal there. That is the safety interlock. That's what's keeping you from turning both of them on at the same time. Now, if I turn off the garage, it might get a little dark. I just turned off the generator. I've isolated the generator back out. Then I could slide this down. Okay, now I cannot I cannot turn my generator on because it hits this. But now this has an open slot to where I could turn my main power back on. So that's how the interlock safely locks out your home power from the outside world while people are trying to repair your, your, uh, all your electrical service out on the lines and uh, uh, with the power companies. And uh, it's not only you know, safe for you, but it's very safe for them. Also, you gotta remember that while they're working on the lines, you can get power surges coming from outside that coming into your house while they're trying to get that service up. It's not clean electric, it's dirty electric. I call it dirty electric when you're getting surges and it's not stable yet. Uh, so this way also, you're kind of forcing yourself to disassociate yourself from the outside uh, electric company while they get everything fixed, lined out, ready to go. Then whenever it's clean, when they've got all, everything back up, your service is back on for after, you know, after, uh, uh, you know, after you've had some kind of a weather event or whatever it might be, then uh, let, let them get it all together for, I mean, whatever, a day, uh, if you have to. But make sure it's stable. Then you can come back out, switch it all back off, go back on the grid and get your power. Man, that is today's project or whatever. Uh, I hope it was kind of helpful to let you know what you can do in here to be safe in putting in a, a exterior generator for uh, emergency power and how to do it safely for both yourself and for the uh, men and women who's out there working on your lines trying to get your power back on while people are out there trying to shock them <laughs> you know, by running their generators in an open circuit anyway. Hope it helped out. I hope it was a little bit inform inform inf informative. Hope there's some information in there for you. But anyhow, like and subscribe. Uh, until the next time in the next project, guys, y'all take it easy. Bridgeview out.